Joining me now is Lawrence Tribe, University Professor of Constitutional Law Emeritus at Harvard University. Professor Tribe, you've been very outspoken and active on this issue, and I want to start with you on this interesting legal question, which is the adoption of what's called the questions presented uh, in the grant. So basically the court says, here's the framing for what is being debated before us, what we're ruling on. And the, and the question presented they, they adopted is the one from Trump's cert petition, and it's a simple one. It says, did the Colorado Supreme Court err in ordering President Trump excluded from the 2024 presidential primary ballot? And the reason that's interesting is because the Colorado GOP, which also appealed, had much more sort of specific and technical questions presented, but it looks like the court is adopting the kind of broadest possible, which gives them any possible an avenue to consider. I think you're exactly right, Chris. They adopted a question that doesn't constrain them in any way. They are going to decide whether to affirm or reverse the Colorado Supreme Court. There are many exit ramps. There are many approaches. What is interesting is that if you are a strict textualist, you really read the words of the 14th Amendment, Section 3. Or if you are a so-called originalist, a historian, uh, someone like Jack Rakoff of Stanford, a Pulitzer Prize-winning historian, leaves no doubt that the right answer would be the one that conservatives would give. It is more prudential moderates and liberals like Kagan and Jackson and Sotomayor, who might wring their hands over the broad systemic impact on democracy. That's an ironic situation. It's filled with ironies. I mean, if you read the briefing uh, submitted by Donald Trump and also by the uh, Republicans of Colorado, it's filled with peons of praise to democracy. The people should not be deprived of their vote. But, Mr. Raffensperger, can't you just find me 11,180 of them? This is all about, this is all about depriving the people of the right to end a presidency by engaging in what a detailed trial in Colorado concluded was insurrection. I don't think the court is likely to take a technical off-ramp Hmm. I don't think it's likely to hold, you know, that the words of the oath that the president took to preserve, protect and defend the Constitution didn't didn't use the word support the hmm. Constitution. And, you know, and therefore the president is not covered. I don't think they're going to take a kind of technical, uh, highly legalistic approach. I think that the conservatives are going to have to establish that they mean what they say. And the one way they could do that is to say that although the original meaning of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment was that you didn't have to be tried or convicted of insurrection as long as there was a determination that you were an insurrectionist, Congress didn't need to create a special scheme to do that because people knew what the, what the score was at the mm. time of the Confederacy. Mm. But now you have to become a little bit of, an orig of a living constitutionalist. Right. Decades have passed. Now things are different. Now there's a lot more controversy about the meaning of these terms. Now we need to wait for Congress to figure it all out and put a procedure in place that is more uniform nationwide. That would be a plausible decision, not one consistent with genuine textualism or originalism, but one that might make sense to the broad middle of the court. At the same time, they've got this very easy case about absolute presidential immunity or whether the fact that he was on trial for an impeachable offense and then acquitted by the Senate, whether that somehow precludes his running. Those are easy questions. The court is certainly not going to go with Trump on those. So if you're a pragmatist, you are likely to say that they could cut this Gordian knot in half. They could basically say that, of course, presidents are not immune from crimes they commit while they're in office just because they're wielding their presidential power 
especially when they're wielding it to overturn democracy and stay in power beyond the four-year vested term. Uh, but on the other hand, even though they have to face the music in criminal court, uh, we are not going to let one state after another make up special procedures to figure out whether they are insurrectionists. I don't think the court would damage yeah. itself very much, except with purists uh, and people like me and Judge Luding, who take the text a little more seriously. Yeah, that, that, that's, an, that's a, I think, a very interesting and plausible way of seeing both the, the legal reasoning here, the practical reasoning, the sort of modes of political, of the modes of constitutional interpretation and the weird cross pressures within them. Uh, to go back to Judge Posner's view on, on, on judging, uh, Lawrence Tribe, it's always such a great pleasure to hear you talk about this. Thank you very much.